I find it incredibly interesting that when I go back and look at the back end of our audio channels, the majority of you who enjoy the podcast and listen to the podcast haven't yet hit that subscribe button or that follow button. I'd like to make a deal with you. If you could do me this huge favor and hit that subscribe button, I promise I will work my absolute hardest to make this show better and better and better. When you hit that button, it lets us grow the show, which means grow the production and bring in all the guests that you'd like to see. This is the only favor that I will ever ask from you. Thank you for your time. Keegan and Company. It's Keegan and Company, the company you keep. That's it. That's got to be it. Welcome back to the Keegan and Company podcast. If you guys are new to the show, my name is Keegan Hipgrave. Uh, this podcast was created to, I guess, shine a light on mental health and normalize the conversations by having conversations with athletes and professionals who we all look up to. Uh, in this episode, I'm really excited to be joined by Long-time friend um, who just so happens to be captain of the Newcastle Knights, uh, player for Queensland and the State of Origin, Australian player, Caelan Ponga. How are you, brother? Good, man. Thank you. Mate, well done. Welcome to, welcome to the GC, bro. How are you feeling? I um, feel good. I'm excited to be on this podcast. Um, when I knew that you were up here, I gave you a message straight away to catch up and to also jump on the podcast. So I'm excited. I feel like every time you come into the Goldie, it's always like, it's always fun, hey? It's a vortex. Mate, it's a Gold Coast vortex, It's hey? a vortex and I'm and I... I want to sit right in the middle of it, to be honest. It's um, For me, it's like a, a, a time to come up here and refresh. Yeah. Get away from Newcastle, yep. see some, some new faces, yes. say hello to everyone and try and get myself to go back. And the best thing is like you were saying, like you've got nothing locked in and planned. Mm. Just like settle in, go with the flow. We've got Shawnee Huds. Like shout out to Shawnee Huds for planning the I weekend. Think <laughs> I think he's booked my weekend. Yeah. He's sort of made reservations for me, but... Yeah, I think we spoke about it before. Like everyone up here is so nice, genuine, doing something, yeah. always on the go. So, yeah, I just want to come up here and, and just sort of plot myself where I can and say hello to people. Mate, I'm excited. We'll do. I think we've got a couple of sessions booked. Mm. We've got a little lunch booked on Saturday. That'll be good. Yeah, we'll still, we'll still get we'll after go, it. Mate, we'll, we'll have fun. We'll have fun. Yeah. We will have fun. Bro, how's the off-season been? What's, been? what's been happening? You're probably like, what, a month away from yeah. pre-season starting? It's been good. Uh, it's been a little bit different. Usually off season, I try and go away for three weeks yeah. uh, straight after the season, go to Bali, New Zealand, go wherever I can just to fully switch off. Um, but this year I've had weddings, two weddings, a box, trip away with the boys. So I probably haven't really had that time to disconnect from the game. Yeah. Um, so that's what coming up here is. It's I'm not with the footy boys, you know, I'm with, you know, just mates from, from, not, like, from uh, way back and, yeah, this is kind of my time to refresh, but it's been good to be honest as well. I've never been to a wedding before. Now I've been to two. Oh my god, bro! Oh, love wins, bro. Love <laughs> wins. That's right. Really, bro, how good are weddings though? Just quietly. Yeah, they're nice. And the two weddings that I went to, they were beautiful. Um, so yeah, it's been busy. It's been a little bit different, but at the same time, yeah, it's been it's been enjoyable. Joking, like after a weekend like this this weekend coming it's like it's almost like a refresher like you're going in mm. refreshed yeah 100 percent. that's that was the plan why i booked it i come up here on my own just want to get away from newcastle switch off again do things like this say yeah. hello have cups of coffee right. perfect and then when i get back to newcastle it's head down yeah um i go back in you know three weeks so i'll work and like just get after it for three weeks before Sweet. I go back. Mate, I sent you a photo of this studio setup. So for guys who are listening and not watching the <laughs> yeah. setup, we've taken over mum and dad's living room. <laughs> Do yourself a, a, a favour. Yeah, yeah, we, we've taken over. I sent you a photo and you're like, oh, geez, that would be nice just to like set it up. Had some red wine. A little red wine. Yeah. We could get after it in here. But no, it'd be cool. Yeah, no, it's a cool little setup. Um, I'm going to try and use this. Like I was saying, I learned so much from just like putting this thing together, hey. Well, you were saying you've... I was saying to you, like, where's your studio? Yeah. <laughs> Mate, it could be wherever you want. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Here, Sydney, Melbourne, so. Yeah, that's the plan. Like, we'll, we'll jump around and I think the whole point of this is, like, to be honest, most of the crew that we've already had on are just mates. Mm. They just so happen to be, like, kind of influential, like, players or athletes in their respective sports and fields, which is so cool. And, like, for them to be able to be vulnerable and guess like open up about like I guess struggles that they've been through then it makes it okay for everyone else to be having these conversations as well so I guess that's kind of the whole reason behind this yeah. podcast so Matt thanks for coming on like it's um I think we've got a good weekend coming we've got a good little afternoon here so thanks for having me I like the reason why I jumped on is because um we've known each other for a long time feel like you're very authentic very genuine and the people that you've had you've had on are, are in different spaces as well it's not just footy players yeah a lot of podcasts 
you know that I've sort of see pop up are all footy players and um, to have you know some of the people you've had on, I've listened to a few of your podcasts now and yeah, I enjoy them. Who's your favourite? Are you lying to me? <laughs> yeah, nah, Ari, actually, what, Ari, Ari, is it Ari? Oh, Ariane, sorry, yeah. sorry for forgetting your name. Bro. Ariane, yeah. oh, I thought she was honestly a very impressive person. Yeah, bro. Like the way she spoke, the things she spoke about. Um, something stuck was like um, Ian Thorpe saying, um, "They have to beat you. You don't have to beat them." Yeah, like that's such a gun mindset Bro, it's like i'm the one that they're trying to beat i don't have to beat myself or them they have to beat me 100 percent. when she said that i think i was walking my dog and i was like yeah yeah i'm gonna, <laughs> like, I'm gonna, gonna start running <laughs> I'll start, come on, come on. Yeah. Uh, Mate, i've i've never met a more like dialed in person like in their respective sport hey like mm. <clears throat> i think i don't know what i was telling you like i don't think any girl has gone back to back olympic golds in the same discipline i don't know if that's right maybe we'll fact check that um but no one's ever done it and she's like so like ready to go for paris mm -hmm. next year like she's just like she had i think you, you would have heard it, like she had a tumor removed yeah, from her yeah. ovaries which was like a huge scare like she wanted to be a mom and like to have that scare she's all good now um but yeah she had that full scare she had the surgery she's recovering she's back full-time swimming now but like never met a like more determined like yeah and they just seemed like grounded as well yeah but all the crew good. like yeah like, patty 100 you know patty's one was great ryan yeah, james <laughs> yeah he would have <laughs> we would have had a few nights over the years with fucking patrick yeah yeah, yeah he's a bit yeah i'll just enjoy listening to him he just sort of sits there <laughs> yeah he's he's a cruisy dude. Mate, i was trying to do good the fun i was trying to do the piece to camera like exactly at the start of this and he's just laughing? giggling at me he's just like poking fun at me i'm like mate let me just try and get through this <laughs> Um, I had me head down. Right? Yeah, mate, you were good. Um, <clears throat> mate, I'd like to probably kick off with probably how you started, like way back in New Zealand, yeah? Because you came over, I think we first linked up in Bronx under 13. Yeah, academy squads would have been like, yeah, grade eight, nine for me. Did you come over in grade eight or nine from New Zealand? Yeah, so I did. Um, I was born in Port Hedland, yep. WA, uh, through, I think dad was in the mines. Yep. And because of that, we moved to Mount Isa. And then uh, my brother passed away when we were there. So we moved to New Zealand just for, I think, my family to be around support. Yeah. Um, to grieve over there. And I was over there till I was about 13. You were 13 at the time? I was about seven at the time. How old was he, if you don't mind? He was asking. 18 months old. So he was, he was young. Um, I was young. I probably was too young to understand and comprehend the pain that my mum and dad was going through. Yeah. Or was or had gone through or still are going through. Yeah. Um, like obviously I knew what was going on and yeah. and whatnot, but it would have been a whole different ball game for them. I don't think I've ever spoken to you about that, hey? It's not something I really bring up. Like people know about it, um, I guess because it happened so long ago. Mm. It's not something that I bring up very often. Yeah. Um, but that, that, you know, that's changed or shaped, you know, my family hugely. Huge, hugely, right? Yeah. So then, yeah, we moved back to New Zealand um, to be around family, be around friends. And I was back there for maybe nine years, eight years. Yeah. Um, and just around cousins, around sport, yeah. just doing everything. And Because you weren't just rugby league, like you were playing golf, yeah, which I want to touch everything, on. Everything, yeah. Everything like golf, union. soccer, touch, union, no league over there. Yeah. Um, I dabbled in everything, tried basketball, tennis, like anything I could – probably get my hands on yeah. or or do I was doing um and then my sister was born when I was about 12 13 and little Kaylee uh, little Kaylee yeah. not so little anymore she's getting big bro yeah she yeah, yeah, is yeah. she's growing up and then yeah moved back to Australia I think uh more opportunity better better life over here yeah. um got a scholarship to Brisbane then signed with the Cowboys so moved back up to Townsville uh, and then signed for the Knights. Yeah. So I moved around a little bit. Why'd you go? Why'd you go league? Like, why didn't you go down golf? Because I heard you were like a gun golfer. Like, you win like third under thirteens nationals or something for golf. Yeah. Or, like, why'd you choose? For, mate, you would have probably saved the body a little bit more if you played golf. You know I, what I mean? I, I regret it now. Hundred percent. I don't know if there's a preseason in golf. Um, <coughs> Just drinking piss, probably. It was. It was my main sport. It was my one of my early passions. Yeah. Um, it was forced a little bit, like. For golf, you have to wake up at like six in the morning, five. Yeah. I don't want to do that as a yeah. kid, but I, I grew to love it. Um, it was a big, it was something me and my old man did a lot. Yeah. And then when we moved to Australia, <laughs> like the golf academy in New Zealand was huge. Yeah. I would go down to the golf course, drop me down there at like seven in the morning, and dad would pick me up at like three, four in the arvo, and I'd just stay down there the whole time. And I'd have 10 mates that were down there, would play golf. 
We'd do chipping challenges, Sick. range, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. It's we'd fun. go have a feed at the clubhouse, Mate. come back out. Yeah. So that was the environment that I was in in New Zealand and then I moved to Australia and it was about 34 degrees. I'm pushing me buggy, sweating. There's no juniors. Yeah. There's no real facility. So – and all my mates were playing footy. So I, I kind of just went, well, my mates are playing footy. There's not much happening here in golf. Like I would move to Mackay. So <laughs> there's only one golf course. Yeah. So that was, that, was, that was the reason why I changed because my mates were playing footy. Mm. But you had like the opportunity because you're at Churchy. Were Churchy? I went to Churchy after Mackay, yeah. After Mackay. You were there with Sua? I was there with Sua. Shout out Jaden Sua. Yeah. We love him. Yeah, we, we got do, a lot of love. I, I do sometimes love you. Yes. <laughs> he do my head in. He, he laughs at he, me on the field. Bro, he, Paddy, gi- he giggles. Paddy said the exact same thing when they were playing um, Samoa. Yeah, 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 he when, yeah. When he was he playing Samoa. Yeah. Paddy dropped the ball and then Sua just like started giggling he at giggles. him. He giggles. Yeah, he's so funny. And he's, he's so scary that it's like, oh, I'm not going to do anything back to you. And he bangs as well. He he. Probably one of the best hitters. Like no one really probably knows that, but he is. Mate, do you remember like um, Juniors, Bron- Broncos you'd Academy? Have to, yes. You'd have to do a drill. It's like run around the corner and run as hard as you can at each other. Ten meters. And you and him that back like back then were like big dogs. I had nothing on Sue. I reckon Sue was a gun. It was scary. It was a scary man. Yeah. So so I went to school with him. Um, we went to church. He. he like I think we both struggled a little bit at that school. Coming from like he would have come from Logan, Logan, yeah, and I come from Mackay. Both schools where you could pretty much wear whatever you want to school, yeah, wear whatever shoes. It didn't really matter. And they're strict, yeah. They're yeah. private school. This churchy was very like tuck your shirt in, hat, tie. Sh- you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the kids there, um, the boarders were country kids, and yeah. they were always kind of looking after you. Yeah, but the ones that you know, from that area, didn't really get along with them too much. But during that time, I played rugby union, loved it, um, played with Fasua and, and yeah, enjoyed rugby union a lot, like yeah. loved it. Probably loved it more than league at the time. Really? But the, the Cowboys came along and um, gave me an opportunity up north and, yeah, so we moved up north. But I'm sure there would have been like an, an option to go to union or even like probably AFL, yeah? There was. There was. I'd, With that, I, you don't have to go in if you don't need I to was going to go to AFL. Really? Like I wanted – I had pretty much agreed to go. It was after the Cowboys. So I'd been with the Cowboys for two years, three years, and I was coming off contract and I hadn't debuted yet. I wasn't really enjoying my footy, to mm. be honest. I was actually – What year was that? Um, 20 – it would have been 2017 maybe, yeah. 2017, 2016. Wasn't enjoying my footy. I was playing 20s but I think I was just probably a young kid that I was watching like Sua debut, yeah. Brodie Croft debut, you might have debuted. Like yeah. these boys that I had played with were debuting and I was kind of like, like I want to be there. Like yeah. why am I not there? Am I not good enough? Do they not value me? Blah, blah, blah. Ego might have gotten in the way a little bit so then I was like, oh, I spit the dummy a bit and was like, oh, I'm yeah. going to AFL. Yeah. Had agreed. Um, but then maybe a month later I debuted in one of those lo- those last rounds. Sick. And that kind of kept me in the league because it was like, well, maybe I can do something in this sport. How, so w- how wild is it like <clears throat> being a young kid? Because I was the same. Like when I was – I think I was 17 I signed my first like contract with the Bronx for four years – and so in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to be an NRL player. Like mm. I have to, like that's mm. my, that's it's like fully, like that. that's fully like my identity now. So I'm like, oh, well, if I'm not playing NRL, then I'm like, like not good enough. Mm. Like had that feeling of like not being good enough. There's like those few years where it's like. Your mates and, are playing. Yeah. And you think, well, am I, I'm good enough. 100%. Like, I should be there. We all played like junior reps together. Uh, like, exactly, yeah. A week where you're hundred percent. I went through that as well. And yeah. I went through that. That year, and I, I did spit the not spit the dummy, but I was probably just young and thought that I should have been there. But an eighteen year old in my position, the, I weighed like eighty kilos. Yeah, I probably I shouldn't have played, but I mean, I got my crack, and yeah, um, yeah my debut was was a special moment. You would have been eighteen, yeah. Eighteen. Were you reckon you were you were ready to play at eighteen? Um. <laughs> Like hindsight, looking like obviously hindsight's a beautiful thing. If you, like yeah. for me, looking back, I would have, I should have debuted a bit later. Like probably, like yeah. debuted when I was nineteen or twenty, and I was like <clears throat> just hungry but arrogant as well. I was like, yeah. I deserve to do this. I deserve to be there. <sighs> but do you reckon like you were ready to do it then? Probably not physically. Yeah, probably not physically. Um, but I, de- I debuted on the wing. <clears throat> the year, year after, I played a few games at fullback, 
I haven't watched those games back. Really? But yeah. it'd be interesting to know now because what I know now, like, is so different to what I knew back then. Yeah. And my mood, like, yeah, uh, physically probably not. I, th- I think mentally I would have been all right, yeah. Um, but, I mean, I played in a few games that next year and then I moved to Newcastle and that's mm. when things really took off for me. Are you enjoying New Love it. It's a beautiful – it's bad. It's like the Goldie. You're getting it is close a beautiful to the, close place. To the beach. We've yeah. already made some comparisons. Yeah. I do love it. It's – um, especially when we're winning. Yeah. Uh, and I, I shouldn't base how much I love the, the city off that, but it makes a huge difference well, in they're, Newcastle. Well, they're right or die, yeah. That's the, they, mate, they support us through thick and thin, um, especially over the last five years that I've been there. Mm. They've, we've, we've had some highs. We've had a lot of lows. But this year to do what we did um, and to give the fans – that moment or those moments yeah like they deserve that i reckon and yeah. they've had some tough years even before i got there like i think two years the two years before i got there they won wooden spoon yeah and it's just been probably bad times at the club for a while now but um you know we've had some great signings we've got a coach that's that's stable that wants to be there that wants to win uh and i, I think the club's in a good position it's crazy like how much winning and losing impacts your week and your Huge. happiness like how yeah. like, how crazy is that like if you're if you're winning it's literally there's no dramas you know there's mm-hmm. no meetings but if you're going back to back like we went wooden spoon at titans and it was like every week crisis meeting like pulling mm-hmm. in it's like if you're you know you don't you just like the slightest like little mishap it's like the biggest drama when you like winners, winners yeah. win you know? you're, you're out of the you're out of the bubble now yeah. like and you, and you probably because i i have a lot of my my housemate he's He's an optometrist. He's got nothing to do with footy. How nice is that though? So good. Right. And, and I love coming home to him because he's out of the bubble. Um, and it's crazy that – and I used to be better at this, but I guess as you get older, you know, when you're young, you've got no scars, you've got no fear, you've, you're a little bit naive to a lot of things. Mm. As you get older, you start to feel things more. You start to maybe care a little bit more, but expectations definitely. And I, I feel like you shouldn't – like why should 80 minutes – dictate how you feel for the next four days 100 percent. and i should be able to go for a coffee the next morning despite losing the 80 minutes because like and especially last year i put a lot of emphasis into my preparation if you prepare the best you can Mm. and you you know you you perform the way you should you can't always control the result but yeah it went i went through a couple years there of definitely uh, especially not last season but last last year because I think we won four games that year. Oh, no, nah, sorry, six games. Yeah. We won six games. We lost eight in a row, bro. Wow. Imagine mate. losing eight games in a row. But I've probably been there, mate. I'm, I'm changing been... the locks on my door. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully no one knows I'm where you live. I'm the car inside so no one exits. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Like, and to go through that patch, you honestly, you start to doubt yourself. You start to think, like, am I a good footy player? Yeah. All these things. Um but to turn it around and have the year that we did this year was was good. Have you heard of um, the stuff that Ben Crow does? You know, you know who Ben. Yeah, Crow I know is? who Ben Crow is. Yeah. yeah, not really. So Ben Crow, he's like I guess like a mindset coach. He does a lot of stuff with the Bronx. Like did a lot of stuff with Patty and the leadership boys right. there. Um, <clears throat> pretty sure like Steph Gilmore, Ash Barty, like yeah, like, no, like really yeah. like high performing athletes. And what he talks about is like removing your identity away from whoever you are, like, yeah. like Caelan Ponga, like the rugby league player, like the NRL player. And he d- even Paddy, like Paddy spoke about it on his podcast where he was just like, mate, I would lose a game of footy and I would be like, I wouldn't go out for coffee. I wouldn't go out, wouldn't want to see anyone because I genuinely thought like people didn't like me as a person. And he like, he's just whole life was wrapped up in it. And then as soon as he could like decipher the two where it's just like, his phone's going off. Is that you? Is that me? I hope that's not mine. Is that me? Push, push the side button. In. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. Man. That's the first one. <laughs> that's the that's first one. That's a coffee one. on me. That's a coffee. No, that's all good. But, um, but that's but that's that was his whole thing. Is that when you can separate like who you are, yeah, like who you actually and usually who you are is a reflection of your family and your values and your friends and your community. Yeah. So like, it's so great that you've got a mate mm. and other mates outside of footy that you know, that are doing other things and other cool things. Even when you come here to the Goldie, like we were talking about it before, like, yeah, we've got like a lot of mates here, but a lot of them aren't doing footy. Like they're doing business, you know, yeah. doing like a lot of guys are like you're surfing. Like most of my mates, close mates, like, yeah, I've got a lot of mates in footy, but most of my best friends sit outside of footy, which yeah. is really nice. It is nice. I had, um, I actually had a mental coach this year. Sick. Early on in the year. And that was his biggest thing was exactly the same uh, to Ben Crow was um, you, you're a person 
and then you, you play footy. Yeah. Like you're not – someone asks you like, you know, who are you? Mm. I shouldn't say I'm Kalen Ponga, the footy player. Yeah. I'm Kalen Ponga, I play footy. Yes. Like, and it's about, you know, Monday to Friday or, you know, whatever until you play is, is what makes Kalen happy. You know, what fills his cup up there and then you can go and perform on the field. And I think – Early on, I was really good at that. I was a kid, eight, like I was 19, 20. Those, those years, that, that first year that I had, it was almost like I wasn't even a footy player. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know how it happened. Were you playing good footy back then? That was like my, 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 my year. breakout year was like I would play and then I would just go and do whatever I wanted. How wild is that? And it's just like I think – Did you get rookie of the year that year? I, I, I went close to winning Dalian. Like I come second. <laughs> How's the mind footy knowledge? <laughs> Go yeah. close to tell you, I didn't even know. Sorry, I, I mate. I come second, <laughs> but I was I wasn't like I, I didn't attach myself to the, being a footy player. I was just a kid, mm. and I just I did whatever the kid does. And the mental coach that I had this year, his name his name's Jared. I sat down with him at the beginning of the year, and I think, like I said, like when you're young, you've got no scars, you've got no fears. But as you get older, you do. And mm. um, yeah, I think you know I. I worked on that a lot this year is, okay, you know, the 80 minutes on the weekend doesn't depict how you should feel Sunday. If I, if you've got dinner booked on Sunday, go to dinner. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter if you win or lose. And I would I would even struggle with that and like Instagram, if I wanted to post something, I'd put, I'd message him and be like, do you reckon it's okay if I do this? And he's like, yeah. why not? Yeah. Like why why can you not do that? And I'm like, oh, I lost on the weekend, blah, blah, blah. blah. He's like, it doesn't matter. It, 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 it does not matter. But then I can imagine – like you can see from like a fan's point of view, like yeah. losing and like as shit as that is to say, like they'd be on the back of you saying, 100%. like, what are oh, you posting? You're going out for dinner. Like you should, you should be upset. It's yeah. like, nah, it's a game of footy. Like that's the biggest thing I learned, like stepping out of the, like the little bubble of professional sport and footy. Mm. It's like, it's just a bubble. Like it's, it's a bubble and you can get so caught up in it. Brother, there's other things outside of yeah. footy. Yeah. To an extent I do, I do understand like, and, and, I guess perception from fans, you know, right or wrong, they have they're entitled to what they think. Yeah, and we do as a as sportsmen or footy players or whatever have a responsibility. Like we can't just completely ignore that. Yeah, but there's there's got to be a level of also like I do care. Yeah, like, I've got a high level of care for my work, my teammates, and winning. Mm. Um, like Instagram posts or going down for a coffee doesn't change that level of care. And I I spoke to him about like. You know, do I have to justify that? Mm. And to an extent, no, you don't. Yeah. Like if inside you, you know that you care, you work hard, you prepare as best as you can and you lose, you don't have to justify to anyone that you care. Like You, you do it because you care. A hundred percent. Like I'm not doing this for no reason. I do it because I care and I love it. So, it, I mean, it was good to have him on board. He definitely helped me so much, um, especially after last year. Just helped me with... Yeah, my mind because I've never really had a mindset coach. Yeah, it's I pretty think, rare. It's probably like, like this probably pretty rare, podcast, like talking about mental health and mindset. It's slowly developing, mm. like, and I think athletes are starting to become more on board of it. Do you reckon it's because like the more I look at it, and the more that I speak to people who are experienced in like even just being actually probably just being aware and having perspective. It's like when they're happy off the field they're way more likely to have positive results and success on the field. Definitely, definitely. Um, and one thing that we did was like we sat down and we looked at like what's ma- what makes me happy. Yeah. And then – What's that? Uh, my family, yeah. my friends, a um, bit of solitude, being on my own. Yeah, okay. Uh, never used to. I used to be someone I think because when my brother passed – my way of dealing with stuff was being around family and friends and that would have been the same for my mum and dad. It was like, all right, we're sad. Let's just go and hang out with everyone we can and, yeah. and fix that. But definitely now I, I enjoy being on my own and honestly just my little puppy Sage. Little Sage? Yeah, little, little Sage girl. girl. Yeah. So, um, yeah, trying to just uh, put time aside for my, my family, friends and, and, and my dog. Do you – who are the crew that you've lent, like, lent on in those, like, I guess, tough times? Like, did you have any role models or crew that you looked up to? It could be at the Knights, could be in Queensland, like, could be family. Who are the crew that you're probably, like, leaning on mm. at the moment or even throughout your career? It's close. It's – there's three people. There's my mum, my dad and my best friend, Bailey. Yeah. Um, my best mate, Bailey, he's been 
He's been my best mate since I was 15, 16. Yeah. He lives in Newcastle now. Um, those three people genuinely don't want anything but to see me succeed and to be happy. Love that. There's no prerogative. There's no, I want him happy so I get this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like, especially in like the way I've, or things that have happened in my journey, a lot of the time people want you for their own prerogative. Yeah. Um, so anytime that I've got any sort of problems, yeah. you know, yeah. any yeah. sort of problems, yeah. it's it's those three people and definitely my dad. Yeah. My dad's the, the voice um, that I lean on the most. If it's like little things, like little funny things, then it's Bailey. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely those three. Would you be a type of person that like internalizes a lot or you're more than happy having conversations? No, I'd, I need to tell someone. I love yeah. that. Bro. I love that. <laughs> I, I love and that. I, like, cause, and it's, it's pretty much Bailey. Like, yeah. but if it's serious, it's mom and dad. Yeah. But if it's, yeah. And it's my mates. Like, uh, and I, I think that's been a big part of my journey as well as surrounding myself with like-minded people or people that have goals and aspirations and want to succeed. I think when I look back at my past, I've always been in that sort of environment mm. and that's when I've done the best myself. Um, so yeah, but I always I do. I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big feeler. Come mate. here, give me a hug. I'm a big feeler. I'm emotional. Give me a hug. Like, get in here. That's definitely. I'm not like no. stay away from me. <laughs> nah, not at it's all. It's more. Man. Come on. Come I remember on. when we when we were chatting throughout the week. You're like, bro, I can't wait to give you a big cuddle. I was like, yeah. my, that's my dog. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like, can't wait. Like, you just got love for your mates, hey? Oh, so much. Yeah, I, I love cuddles. Yeah. I'm very affectionate. <laughs> I love my mates. <laughs> you love your mates. I'm not afraid to. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. And yeah, like I said, I think that's been a big part of my journey is having circles or, or mates that have, you know, pushed myself and themselves as well. Do you reckon that's changing in the footy, like the footy world? Because I remember when I came in, like especially at Bronx, like, and I don't know if it was just me because I was like a young kid and was like just probably like scared to talk like most like 17, 18 year olds coming in. But it wasn't so much like talk about what was going on. Like even the mental health space in general, I think like in any like male dominated professional sport, like I don't see having like us having like big conversations about mental health, about anxiety, about pressures. And then and I, I'm keen to get your like opinion on it. But even the last couple of years, like I was talking to Boothie and Nico and they were talking about in COVID where like we all went into the bubble, right? Like and... I think the storm, they were at the sunny coast and a lot of the guys, like when they were stuck in the bubble, like they weren't allowed to leave their friends and family, obviously their friends weren't, but their families hadn't arrived yet. Mm. And while a lot of the guys loved it because they were by, they were with the boys, chilling, they were around, easy. they were chilling, cruising, they were on the sunny coast, they had a good life. There was a lot of guys who were struggling without seeing their kids. They might yeah. have been missing their missus. They might have been missing their family. And a lot of boys were struggling. So Nico, I think especially and Boothie, they had the conversation where it's like, well, why aren't we having this conversation and why aren't we talking about it? So what they did was they put everyone in a room, like coaching staffs, um, like a coaches, assistants, like wellbeing managers, all the players. And they're like, pretty much that. Like, yeah, yeah. some guys are really enjoying good, it. Eh? So good. And like, well, that's going to have a chat. So they broke off into like little groups and had questions and then like got around and they started talking about like what, how they were feeling. And I look back, I was like, there is no way no that way. we would be doing this 10 years ago when we like first came into grade. Even for them to do that, it's pretty big. Yeah. Like it's massive for them, for both of them to take that initiative. And cause you've got some, like every team's got like the alpha yes. or the alphas. And then you've probably the guys that don't talk. Yeah. The ones that do blah, blah, blah. I definitely don't think it's done enough. Mm. And I, I do think it's changing. Um, you know, that masculine sort of like look, like, you know, don't talk about your feelings, can't be soft, that sort of thing. It's, it 100% is changing because I reckon that, that everyone physically is the same and and whatnot, but mentally is, is where you have the edge. Yeah. And vulnerability is a huge part of performance. Mm. It, it breaks down barriers. It allows you to sort of connect as well with your teammates. And we did a little bit of it last year during the preseason, but I, it's probably better done organically. What did what did you guys do last season? So do you remember? Not like last year. Last so not year. last. So two seasons ago. Yeah. We would do like every Monday would be like we would get someone to sit up at the front, and would go through their journey. Really. Um, and it could you could be as vulnerable as you wanted, and and it was very vulnerable. Like Safe space. Some people, like, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And you do like I enjoyed hearing those sort of stories. It allows you to connect with them a lot more. Um, but 
you know, it's, yeah, it, if it's done organically, I reckon it's good. Mm. It's definitely not, it's definitely growing, but it's definitely not um, probably where it should be. Well, that's why I think like these conversations are so great to have. Mm. Like ha- having someone like yourself, like Mondelian this year, like I like arguably one of the best players in the game. I'm not here to piss in your pocket. Like I love you, but I'm not here to piss in your pocket. Yeah, cut off. Yeah, <laughs> we'll give him a cuddle <laughs> off here, mate. We'll cuddle off here. But that's what I mean. Like for you to come on, and I'm I'm really keen to talk about the concussion and, and the year last year and then yeah. this year. And um, but for you just to be open to come on board, like it just shows a the type of person you are, but b like yeah, like being vulnerable is like it's not a bad thing. And it actually, like you said, like I've never heard that, like being vulnerable actually leads to being closer to yeah, the it boys. Opens, opens you up. Because all, like, all my best mates are a crew that I've like have told like wild things to. Mm. Like, and it can be after a thousand beers and it can also be like just... That's organic, just so, that, That's organic, my brother. You know what <laughs> I mean? But it is changing. So it is, it is cool. It is changing. That's like I said before, it's why I wanted to jump on this podcast because this podcast isn't about anything else but, you know, normalising that mm. and speaking about it and getting athletes on here that... Um, you know, share similar. I reckon everyone that you've had on is sort of similar in that space where, you know, we need to talk about it more, mm. need to make it normal. And athletes have been from different areas, which is what I've enjoyed about your podcast. But yeah, I definitely think in rugby league, it's, it's it is getting better, hundred mm. percent. I I sort of got exposed to it through Mitchell Pierce. Yeah, okay. He's a little bit more spiritual yeah. than anything else. Like he's very, he's very spiritual. Yeah. Um, but. But he's very vulnerable at the same time. Um, as much as he is crazy off the field, yeah. he's very like in terms of when it comes to like connection, um, like he likes manifestation, like all that sort of stuff. Like he's really? very spiritual. But that exposed me to like there's more to footy than just passing the ball. There's more than just you know running fast and stuff like that. You've got to be in tune with yourself and mentally on. And there's so much performance in that as well. Bro, I really want to um, I want to touch on the concussion. Mm. I feel I feel like that's like a very fitting conversation for us to have. Like, maybe. it's pretty crazy. I want to hear about your story a little bit too, because I'll tell you mine. Obviously, you tell me yours. I'll tell you mine. <laughs> we <can> compare. <laughs> we can compare our concussion <laughs> stories. Um, yeah, it was crazy. How you feeling um, now? You good? I feel really good now. I love that. Yeah, and now that I'm through it, I look back at that period or you know the couple periods that I had mm. and. Yeah, it was a blur. Because rewind, I don't remember you having any big concussions when we were coming through juniors. No, nothing. Nothing, Nothing. Hey. And even my first four years in NRL, nothing. Yeah. But I just had the, I had a patch in 2022 mm-hmm. at the back end where it was, it was bad and it was like every second game yeah. or I had about three or four too close together, maybe within yeah. a month and a half or yeah. two months. So they made me sit out the back end of 2022 for six games um, and then come Just back. Just to give your brain like a chance to yeah. recover? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. We, we were going terrible. Like we are going to come – we weren't going to make the eight. Yeah. Um, there was no real point in, in pushing it, you know, especially when it's your brain. 100%. And so they just said sit out the six weeks and so then sat that out, come back, trained – like I trained the, the hardest and best I have for that preseason, come back to round one because you're probably not doing any contact yeah like you're just getting fit you're just getting fit fit and strong but then like because i wanted to play half yeah so then i i come back and in game two is when i had my the big one Mm. and i knew as soon as it happened it was more than just like a concussion i was like media is going to be all over this you know people were calling for me to retire i knew it was more than just a concussion but how did you feel? Like, what were you, did you, were you having symptoms after that big one? Uh, yeah, I was only for a few days. Yeah, like it wasn't a, a lot, like a prolonged thing. What were your symptoms? Do you remember? Just honestly, like a little bit of like fuzziness, like blurriness, yeah, like fog. felt weird. But then I say that, but I'm also like, was it just that I was so emotional from everything going on? Yeah, you know, obviously the media was all over it. My mum and dad, friends teammates like I don't know if I was just extremely emotional but it might be from the mm. concussion but yeah I just felt yeah I just felt weird and it's mate, it's a hard enough thing to try and navigate through without all the external pressures yeah. as well yeah yeah 100 percent. so that happened and then I was probably in limbo for a week like no one really knew what to do 
Um, I think they were trying to organise for me to go over to Canada. And in that week, I because no one was talking to me, doctors weren't saying anything. Yeah, right. That's probably the – like I probably felt like I had no purpose in that week and it was the weirdest I've felt. Yeah. Because like – no one said anything. Like they're not, they're not saying like you're going to have this amount, amount of time off, you're yeah. going to retire. It was all just media just having a frenzy. Making up whatever they want to make up. Literally. Yeah. Everyone turned into neuroscientists in, <laughs> in the space of a day. You got a, you got a journo who's done oh. like a couple of years at university. He's like, what do you know about neurology yeah, mate, and mental health? So then planned to go over to Canada, um, sat down with my mum and dad, you know, a day before we left. And they were like, well, there's – there's really two outcomes is, you know, you can go over there and say you're sweet or you go over there and you, you, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> you're retiring. Yeah. Um, and my dad was kind of like, what are you going to do? Yeah. If it's the second one. Yeah. And I was like sitting there pretending like I didn't care, but I was like, oh, I'll find something. Like I'll, you know, I'll, I'll find my feet. I'll, I'll, I'll do something. I'm not going to sit around and do nothing. Yeah. And that, I think that, that moment probably clicked me a little bit. Probably, probably made me realize what I've got. Yeah. Appreciate what you have. Um, so before going over there, you had like... I, like I, I thought I was done. It could That could have been it. 100%. Really? Especially with all the noise that was back in Australia. Yeah. There was so much noise around he needs to retire. Like he's had too many. It's no good for him. Like people... It's just media. Like mm. they had no idea. Mm. But that was the noise. Mm. And so we went over there, flew over. My doctor and dad come over. Chris Levi, did Chris Levi go over as well? Nah, did, Jin. You? But I was talking to Chris Levi. Yeah, from Newcastle. Yeah, I think One he organised me to go yeah, over there. He's a good dude. I like Chris. Yeah, he yeah, is. He's a legend. He's just he's a dude he's, as well as a doctor. Like he he knows his stuff. Yeah, but he also gets. But he can talk to you as well. He gets like not well. He's the guy who I deal with my concussions. Same dude, legend. Went over there and they, they it's called neuroplasticity mm. and they put this like swimming cap on it. Yeah, it's probably the best way to describe it. Um, and it's a six minute test. Yeah. And for six minutes, there's like this lady going like, shoe, car, beep, <laughs> window, house, beep. So for six minutes and you've got to, you've got to try and connect the dots between the two words. Are they similar? Are they not? And it goes for six minutes. Were well, you it, like putting pen to paper or are you just thinking just about thinking. it? Just thinking. So I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> really? I'm like, am I doing good? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me some feedback I can't here. actually tell. There's, there's no, like, so then, um. It tests for like your um, sensory processing, so like how you hear, yeah. um, cognitive thinking, yeah. and something else, but I forget. Yeah. And so it goes for six minutes, and literally at the end of that six minutes, I could have been told two two answers. Really, I wasn't ready for that. No, <laughs> I, I was not ready for that. I would have thought it would be a much more in depth yeah. one because when I did mine with Chris, it was like a half day of like. Um, literacy, numeracy, problem solving. I did that one as you, well. You would have done I've that done one that, as well. Yeah. yeah, so you get it. Like, yeah. But I don't know. It's, a, it's a big test, that one. Mate, you cooked by the end of it. <laughs> At the start, I'm cooked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm going in there tired. Yeah, yeah. And so, what, and so what do they say after the six-minute test? So their, their theory over there is you can train the brain. Yeah. And so they deal with people with dementia, Alzheimer's, all that sort of stuff. And mm. um, they – so I, I, I was all right. Like my – my results, objective results were sweet. Sick. Um, you know, they said probably just to train a little bit more in this area. Right. So I stayed there for three days, did the test probably twice a day, yeah. trained, did what they were like, did Full, the like, stuff. Mental, like mental Yeah, it's training. like you do a, like you do a treadmill and then you do a test, you put it on and all like, stuff That's like that. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. And to be honest, the people over there were so welcoming. Yeah. Um, like it. It was so seamless. It was almost too good to be true. Really? Like we walked in, so happy, so excited for you to be there, which made me feel comfortable because it was a little bit like daunting going 100%. over there. Like, well, they could have told you, well, like, mate. It's and he's going to be. I, I thought I was going to walk in and there's going to be like these scientists and <laughs> lab coats. Like and they're glasses. like not going to be able to talk to me. And yeah. but it wasn't like that at all. Sick. Um, so that ma they made that experience kind of enjoyable to be honest mm. well, especially when I got the good news yeah um yeah so I had some things to do coming back um and I did that for probably three three months two yeah. three months but just to go over there and have that clarity and reassurance that I was sweet mm. because you know in Australia there's so much noise saying retire but I was in Canada and to be honest I was over there for a week and I would just go walk the streets and I just felt so good yeah like walking the streets in Australia you 
I get looked at, you know, like yeah. Zach Callen, like those yeah. sort of things. I went over there and I just I just disconnected from Australia. Mm. Um, so still, still obviously looking after myself and and doing what we needed to do. But to go over there and just sort of like like sort of being here, just refresh, yeah. just get away from it all. Um, yeah, it gave me that clarity, and I'm so glad I did it. Right, that would give you so much confidence to actually come back. In, mm. and then to play like do contact and to play great because i imagine there'd be so many yeah. guys who would be like oh like I'm, I'm worried about getting another hit like i remember when my <clears throat> i had six i had six months off in 2019 that turned into 12 months with covid and like at that time i was like i was so dialed in like ready to come back like i had i had my time to recover and i was just ready to go mm. um but in that time there was um you're good just getting hot. I'm getting hot. You're getting warm. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we open a window? Are we good? Yeah, yeah, maybe open it up. We'll see how we go. Um, they, I'm pretty sure there was like a time where it was like, yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, there was like a time where it's just like, if you get any more in that year, then you'll have to finish up. And I was like, oh, I'm not ready for that. Like, I'm not ready to, f to finish yeah. up footy, but I was so ready to go. And I didn't have any of those thoughts, um, even though they said, if you do get like another one, then that's it. Um, but no, nah, I like got through the year, played like another two seasons, obviously like 2021, I had another big couple that, that medically retired me that finished me up. Um, but yeah, it was like the biggest thing that I got from the neurologist was just like, everyone's different. Everyone's different. 100%. And everyone, and everyone reacts to, I guess, like head knocks and head trauma differently. Like you could get one big concussion and be, or one big head knock and be done, or you could get like 10 and be sweet. Yeah, especially the the symptoms afterwards. I reckon yeah. you hear about um, this might be this might be incorrect um, information, but you hear about Boyd Cordner and how after his last episode, he was having headaches for like months. Yeah, um, Tim Glasby. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. he's good mate. He was having headaches for a while. Really? So I didn't have that. La two seasons ago, I had the headaches, and they they. They were around for a little while, but I didn't have like prolonged symptoms. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every literally everyone's different, and I've had a few now. Like yeah. I've had probably like six in the last year and a half. Mm. Literally all of them are so different, and the really? way you wake up from them are different. Yeah. Um, what happens afterwards different. So, but I'm just glad that I don't, I don't know what happened coming back from Canada. I had a little scare against the sharks. Mm. But other than that, I've literally been fine. I haven't had any any scares or anything like that. Mm. Mate, talk to me. Talk to me about this year. You obviously, are you happy with the way the season finished up and the way you guys went? Like Dali M, that's obviously mm. like very impressive. Like, how how did you feel about the year? Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, to it was be a honest, bit, bit of a roller coaster like, as well. Yeah, it was felt like two seasons in one. To yeah. be honest, if, if the first half of the year I was in Canada having a bit of a holiday. Yeah, and I missed six weeks of the year and. When I was over there, I was, I felt guilty. I felt like I've let a lot of people down. Just mm. like I was disappointed in myself. Just because you weren't here. Just because I was over there and the team was was going well actually back here. Yeah. Um, I just felt like I wasn't a part of it. Mm. Um, so then when I was over there, I, I kind of said to myself like I need to, I need to sort of get my shit together. Yeah. Um, line in the sand moment. Go back and and do something. And my first game. Because the team had been going so well and the structures, I was almost like, I don't want to come back in and n not pick up from where they're going. Yeah. Like I felt like I had something to prove. So come back in, found my feet again and then just honestly just felt really comfortable within the team. Sick. We had some good signings this year. Jacko, um, who definitely made a difference for us. Adam Elliott, mm. um, you know, Punter. Um, Tyson Gamble, we call him Punter. Yeah, I was like, who is yeah, Punter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, Punter. Yeah, Punter, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. um, he likes to punt. <laughs> and then just like a lot of the boys had hit form. Like yeah. I think for us over the last couple of years, we've had injuries that have, they stop you from, you know, getting, getting in rhythm. Yeah. Um, I think I played 20 out of 27 games, which yeah. is the most I've played. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just found rhythm. I just found my, found my feet, enjoyed being back at fullback and – I yeah, just had a team that sort of we all just gelled and knew our jobs. Mm. I felt like over the last couple of years it hasn't been like that. It's been just sort of not make it up as you go, but um, it almost felt like if I played well, you know, we had a chance. Yeah. And if I didn't play well, 
you know, we probably didn't have a chance. And that's yeah. that's not being arrogant. It's probably just the reality of what the team, where the team was at. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it was awesome to be honest to win ten games in a row. Yeah. We lost eight games in a row last year. So yeah, it's a full full reversal. Full, yeah, full circle. So to do that uh, and just see the, the town buzzing and everything, um, yeah, it's pretty special. Mate, run me through Origin because you, to be honest. I wasn't I wasn't following it that that hard because you pulled out yeah the last two yeah. last two what what was the decision there Rami and you can give me a little bit more clarity because I um I had only played probably three games before three or four games before Origin yeah due to me being out at the beginning of the year and I, I kind of knew I kind of knew I wasn't ready as well as not going to get picked yeah and Billy rang me and he said. Um, you know, this has been a, it's a tough decision, um, but we're not going to play you this year. Oh, this game, mm. um, we just don't think you're ready. Yeah. And Reese had been lining it up. Like, yeah, he's been going. To be good. honest, he deserved to be there. Yeah. Um, and I was, you know, I was gutted. I was filthy. But he said to me, like, you know, take this time to work on yourself. And I probably mentally wasn't ready to play. To be honest, I was still scared about my head. Really? Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that he did that. And then, but then he, you went back and you killed it. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I like, well, that, that, him giving me that time to just focus on the nights mm. was the best thing for me in the best, best thing, thing that for the season. Yeah. yeah. So then I went, I went and just focused on that, to be honest. Just yeah. focused on myself, just preparing each week for the nights. Mm. Like, again, filling up my cup as a person. Yeah. Um, because when you go into Origin Arenas, it's more than just physical, it's mentally, you, you, you are so, it's like a vault, it's like a, the Burley Vault. It's like the Burley Vault. The Burley Vault. You can You're so mentally into origin it. to Burley Vault. <laughs> we'll You're we'll so mentally in it. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah. it, it's, what is it really? It's like three weeks, but that whole period, you're just thinking about origin. Even really? when you go back to Clubland, for myself, if we lost, I'm still thinking about the loss. Yeah. So to not have to worry about that and just worry about my footy at Clubland. Yeah, it was the best thing that he he and I did, to be mm. honest. Mate, you've had a lot of achievements in the game. Where does Origin sit in those achievements? Is that one of the most memorable or what's probably one of your most memorable achievements so far? Um, It's it's pretty high. Yeah. That win at Suncorp mm. was was pretty – It was one of the most euphoric feelings I've had. Which year was that? Last year. Last year. Last year. Mm. Especially because Clubland were going so bad. Uh, went into that arena, played the footy that I know I can play. Mm. Um, this year to, to give the crowd, the Nui crowd, that experience is, is something that I, I, I really value and want more of, especially as the captain of the club, signed for four years. Like now that I've experienced it, I want more of it. Mm. Um, but I think... Yeah, I think that sun, like that sun court win when Do, when Dozer's running down, yeah, and we win that game, um, uh, yeah. I think any time you pull on a jersey for the first time, special too. Debut, yeah. Knights jersey, Queensland debut, those sort of things are, are special as mm. well. How's the celebrations? They were good. Tried to make it as good as you can, <laughs> yeah, because like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to go back to Clubland the next yeah, the next okay. day or something like that. Yeah, right. But yeah, it's fun. It is fun, mm. especially like. You're so focused and so into it, and then just to let yourself sort of relax and enjoy the moment, it's such a, it's such a good feeling. Mate, you talked about um, you also talked about like being captain and obviously the pressure that comes with that. How do you how do you deal with that pressure? Because obviously it's like it's not just Sydney where there's like however many teams mm. in Sydney. It's like Newcastle is a very like footy dominated town like how do you go with dealing with that pressure is that something that you really absorb and you really lean into or sometimes where it can be too much um yeah so last year so not, last year was my first time my first year being captain and i think um when i took on the role i sort of my idea was i have to be the perfect captain i have yeah. to stop being who i am i have to be this sort of person that I'm not yeah. and that's just adding more pressure to yourself 100%. and especially in a losing team you know we like I said we, we didn't do well that year so I felt more pressure on top and I'm, I'm going home and I'm like like what more can I do yeah. um 
I sort of this year I just forgot about that. Like I just said to myself, just be yourself. Obviously make sure that you're training hard and you're leading with your examples, but you're not I'm not to be honest in like the the team, I'm not the biggest talker. Yeah. Um I'm in a leadership now where leadership group now where I've got people that sort of do that Man. and I can just just do me and just probably lead with my actions. Mm. So that's definitely helped heaps. Like having having the leadership group and some boys in that group that are a bit older than me sort of take the reins a little bit more. Yeah. Um has freed me up so much. Um because last year like it was just me. It yeah. was just me. There wasn't any help. We weren't winning. And I'm just going like, this is what wild. the hell's going yeah. on here? This is but this year was so much better. And um, in terms of pressure, like I think when I was growing up, you, you try and look for like, oh, what does pressure mean? And mm. I saw someone say that, you know, it doesn't exist. That's not true. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah it's fully there, brother. It's, <laughs> like, yeah. um, but it's something that I, I reckon I've grown up doing like playing golf there's there's pressure in every every shot like i think you, you put yourselves in those moments and i definitely love the idea um and dan carter speaks about it of like it's such a privilege mm. it is a privilege like, yeah you know being in that being in those moments like especially this year when i was goal kicking like at the end of the day i'd rather be the one missing than watching someone else miss like yeah. i would it's a privilege a hundred if there's a game if there's you know, it, it's twelve all in the eightieth minute on the sideline. I want, I would rather be the one kicking that that, that misses, yeah, than watching someone else miss. Like I want to be that guy, yeah. And that's the pre- that's the privilege of pressure, yeah. And I think I've grown up with it. Like uh, if you're playing golf and you've got a three footer and it's for fifty bucks, yeah, there's a bit of pressure. Bit in of that. cash <laughs> on the line, yeah. And your, your, your old man and your mates heckling you. There's a fair <laughs> bit of pressure in that. Yeah. So. Um, I definitely have adopted the idea that, you know, pressure is a privilege and, um, you know, I just want to be in those moments at the end of games. Mm. Um, yeah, because that's what makes or breaks great players, really. Yeah. If you think about all the great players, you look at Nathan Cleary's grand final performance. Mate, wow. If he, w- if he had have walked away from pressure, they don't win. I don't know. But like, he, he I, just went, I'm going to take this moment. I almost walked away with 20 minutes to go when they were up by three tries. I was like, this is, there's no way that they can lose it from here. Poor boys. Sorry, brothers. <laughs> Sorry, boys. <laughs> we've got a Sorry. lot of mates in the side. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, boys. Um, but like that was that was so wild. Like, mate, I fully walked away. Like Luai was off. Um, Crazy. Um, Isaiah Yo was Cops off. Cops comes Cops, on, yeah, frees him up. So, yeah, I think especially for younger people because when I was younger – used to like sort of read things and look for things what does pressure mean but mm. it, it is it is a privilege mm. um and i reckon the more you can sort of embrace it you know the better off you'll come yeah i mean like just before when you were talking about how you just got the leadership role and how like you thought you had to like change who you mm. are i mean i was talking to a few of the richmond boys richmond tigers a- afl and um this guy could Trent Cochin, who was, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. was the captain, right? So he's the captain of the, of the side. Um, and we had a little bit to do with him, but more the the boys. Um, Leggy, he's at Collingwood now. He's one of the blokes I was just telling you about before jumping on air. He was at Richmond for the three years that they won the premierships. Like they yeah. went back to back to back. And um, what Leggy was saying was that they had like these little, um, I guess like kind of group conversations where they were being vulnerable and they were talking yeah. about it. And this is just before they went on, on the run. And what Trent was saying is like, he growing up he was always like a larrikin like he'd always like get around the boys he'd always like be like like pulling pranks and stuff like that yeah and then when he got the captaincy it was almost like i have to be so perfect i can't swear i can't be i can't step a foot out of line i have to be perfect and i got put in a box but he's like that's not me like my i want to be able to like i want to be able to joke around with my mates and i want to be able to do that and so for he's like and for that however however long and i'm obviously like i'm probably not doing it justice the way the way he describes it but he's like yeah i didn't feel like I was myself, I felt like I had to mm. be very clean. And then, as soon as they, as soon as he said that, and he was like vulnerable with the boys, it was like it just all opened up, and he could and he could be himself. And then the boys sort of like really got around that. And then they went on a run; they won yeah. three in a row. I um, I actually know that story. Uh, Danny Badiris, you know Danny. Yeah, Badiris. Danny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think he got me in touch with Trent, and we sent a couple of t- texts to each oh, other. Sick. Um, but that. That exact mindset is what I fell into. Yeah, like, and that's not me. Like nah. anyone that knows me as a person knows that I'm like the most laid back, easygoing, carefree yeah. person. But I like I'm carefree, but I do care a lot about my teammates, yeah. the club, and my work. Yeah. Like 
I want to win. Mm. But I, yeah, I changed the way I was, and it just it honestly put put, put more pressure on myself, and yeah, probably just self self um, sabotage at the end, really. Yeah, um, mate, life after footy. Have you do you think about it often? What's plans? Yeah, and I used to struggle with this question when people would ask me. I used yeah. to get a little bit choked up, but um, I think la not probably two years ago and the year before that. I put a lot of my eggs in a lot of baskets. Yeah. And I was spreading. Oh, you were the, busy. You're doing podcasts. podcasts you had coffee, a, coffee, beer. Yeah, the whole thing. Had everything. Like I had a lot going on. But like this year, I probably, like I said, I found the balance of, you know, giving my energy to less, but giving more of it. Yeah. Instead of giving, you know, less energy to a lot of things. Mm. Um, like right now, to be honest, my main thing is I just want to reach my potential in this in this in, in this job in this industry and when i finish it if, if it is tomorrow if i finish in two years say at least i've given it my all yes and i think it's taken me a little while to to get to that because mm. i used to think oh you know i've got to start this business and i've got to start that and i'm going to be set up the i've got to be yeah. do this and do that but like one of the things that keeps me up in that is not reaching my potential yeah so um yeah just narrowing narrowing my focus and giving more love to to a small amount of things. Mm. I haven't really thought about life after footy. Obviously, when I had my head, my concussion, I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I yeah, thought, yeah. That could be and a reality. And I honestly thought, shit, <laughs> yeah. what am I going to do? Uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, nah, for, for now, I just want to honestly get the best out of myself in this in this sport. Because I imagine, like, the last thing you want to do is, like, look back in, like, whenever you retire, mm. like, oh, I could have just given it, like, that little bit more, hey? Mm. I, I still think you will. Yeah. I still think... I think the, the, even the best probably will do that, mm. but yeah, I mean, I, I've done the, I've I've done the podcast and that, and and it was taking my energy away from footy. And this year, I you know I played my best footy. Mm. Um, I wasn't footy obsessed, but I had the energy to go in there and give it my all. Yeah. Um. So I'm yeah I'm happy with that. I found that balance now. But I look at you as someone who's like super curious. Like you're like you're a very curious yeah. person and I feel like whatever it is after footy, you're just going to be dialed in. It'll be like now, the way you are That's now what with I mean, footy, yeah. you'll just shift that focus to somewhere else. I think challenges excite me. Yeah. So at the moment, like there's obviously a big challenge ahead of me um, with the Knights, with winning a premiership there. But if that was to go, I would definitely put my head towards something else yeah. and give it my all and – but yeah, for now, and I used to get like, is this the wrong answer to say that I want to give footy my all? But not really. Like, mm. you know what all. I mean? If I, if I get to 30 and I've, you know, I've given it everything I've got and then yeah. I move on to something else, um, I think I'll be pretty happy. Yeah, bro. Um, mate, we've, I think we've, we're going on an hour, brother. We're, fly, we're flying through. Are we? Yeah, bro. It's probably flying across. It's been an hour. It's been an hour. Yeah, yeah. Mate, um, has the, is there anything that's like I guess been happening in your life that we haven't touched on that you'd like to talk about? Mm, not really, hey. What I you, feel like we've covered a lot, of, a lot of things. What are you excited for? What What are you like? I I asked this question the other day. If if I who did I ask it? Jared Wallace, I think I said because at the moment, like you look, man, you look like you're thriving. Like you look so happy. Like even picking you up from the airport before, like you I come in. You, I saw you. You come in, mate, you come in with a big smile. You come in with a, t a ton of energy. And that's what I love about it. Because every time I see you, it's just, just mad energy. And I think, I don't know, maybe that's why, maybe that's why we get on so well. But is there anything that's missing in your life at the moment? Because you, like I said, you look very happy. If Premiership like, ring. Nah. Premiership um, ring. That would be nice. Um, nah, I think this year I, I definitely did find the balance. Mm. Um, yeah, in previous years, like I said, I've given a lot of en a lot of energy to a lot of things, but I haven't. You know, I'd rather just narrow that down and give all my energy. Um, now, not really, to be honest. Like I am a pretty happy place um, at the moment. I'm just working hard, just train Monday to Friday, enjoy a beer on the weekends. It's the best time of the year because you have no pressure. Like yeah. it's you know, we're getting fit, we're working hard. And then, you know, when you roll into March, you've prepared for so long to, to, to be ready. So, but right now, to be honest, 25, like, especially after this year, I just feel like I'm getting started. Yeah. Like, and I know that, like, I honestly do. I feel like I'm really in a really good place. I'm happy. Um, the team's in, a, you know, hopefully we can continue what we did last year. Um, 
yeah, no, I'm just happy to be honest. Well, brother, mate, thank you. Thank you so much for jumping on. Um, thank you for like, you know, spending your time here. Thanks for coming in and popping into the studio. Um, and by studio, I mean like a living room. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but no, thank you, mate. Thanks for, thanks for your friendship for however long we've known each other. Um, I'm really excited to see what you do for the next couple of years, especially next year. I'm excited to see what you do post footy. Um, mm. I've got a lot of love for you, brother. And I'm, I'm really happy that you're happy. Thank you, bro. And you look happy too. Do Glowing. My, do my best. I've been watching the I've been watching the podcast on YouTube, mate. Every time it sticks <laughs> to you, you look happy. So nah, it's awesome. It is, nah, thanks for having me on. Thank you, bro.